Boys and girls, during today's read aloud, you will learn about the citizens in the Roman Republic. So we are in lesson four of our ancient Roman civilization unit, and we're going to read about the citizens and the people of the Roman Republic today. What is a citizen? What do you think a citizen is? Someone who lives in a civilization. You will also learn about three categories of people in ancient Rome. Patricians, plebeians, and slaves. Repeat after me, patricians, plebeians, slaves. Those are three groups of people that existed in the Roman Empire. Finally, you will learn about the change in the environment in ancient Rome from a monarchy to a republic to an empire. So say those words after me, monarchy, Republic, Empire. You're going to need activity book page 4.2 today. After each image, I'm going to be uh, asking you to write some things down. I'll tell you what I want you to think about before I read um, for each image. And go ahead and turn to page 4.8, which has a rubric for how I'm going to be scoring you. So we're looking to see if you can find the main idea from these uh, things that I'm, from the passages that I'm reading you. So you're gonna have to do that, capture that in different ways, either writing a sentence, drawing a picture, writing down key words you hear. So to get three points on this assignment, you need to clearly and accurately identify the main idea of the read aloud. And that's gonna to come towards the end. You get two points if you loosely identify the main idea. So it's, you kind of got it, but I'm not really sure you completely understand it. And then one point you will get if you attempted it, but it just wasn't quite correct, okay? So open your activity book to 4.2 and let's get ready to listen. So this first picture is image one. You're going to write one word that summarizes the topic of the paragraph I read. So you're going to listen for the main idea, and we're actually gonna do this one together when I'm finished. So as I'm reading, I want you to listen for what you think the main idea is. What's one word that could sum up what this paragraph is about? Tyrant Etruscan King. Before the establishment of the Roman Republic, Areas in present-day Italy and surrounding lands were divided up into lots of little kingdoms with many different rulers. Some kings were richer and more powerful than others. The kings and their people fought each other all the time, and over the years they developed long-standing rivalries that often resulted in warfare. The city of Rome was controlled by a long line of Etruscan kings who had ruled for several generations. Etruscan kings worried, above all else, about losing power, especially losing control of their city. They figured the best way to hang on to power was to be as harsh as possible with their subjects, the people over whom they ruled. So if we go back to this uh, box one for image one, it says write one word that summarizes the topic of the paragraph. I think that the topic, that the word that covers this paragraph very nicely is power. All the kings wanted power. The Etruscan kings wanted to keep power and other kings wanted to take power. So for image two, uh, as I read aloud, you're going to write down key words that you hear from my reading. So you're writing down any words that you think are really important to this study. Roman politicians appealing to the people of Rome. Around 500 BC, the people living in Rome decided they had had enough. They overthrew their Etruscan king and created a new form of government. Hmm, government might be a good word to write down. 
Rome's new form of government was now called a republic. In some very important ways, this new government was based on a form of government that the ancient Greeks practiced at the time, democracy. Instead of having a king make all the laws and tell everyone else what to do, the Romans decided that the citizens, the people, should be able to elect those who would work together to make decisions and form laws to guide how their society was ruled. In this new form of government, the people had more of a voice in how their society would be ruled as a republic. So go ahead and write down any words. Hopefully you are writing them down and you might need to pause the video several times to write it down. Moving on to image three. As I read, I want you to draw a picture to summarize the Roman government. So you're listening to what the Roman government is like and just draw a little picture. It could be a symbol. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Here's how the new form of government worked. Instead of a king, there was a group of people called the Senate. Members of the Senate were called the senators. There were 300 senators in the Roman Senate, all of whom were men. Senators held their position for as long as they lived. The people elected two consuls, two people whose job it was to make final decisions on whether a new law should be passed or whether, for instance, to go to war. They had the power to command the army and were advised by the Senate. The consuls were powerful people in the Roman Republic, but they did not have the power to write new laws on their own. This sounds very, very similar to our democracy here in the United States. We have senators and we have committees that write laws. It's not one or two people writing our laws. Senators debated over what kinds of laws were needed in Rome. When senators came to an agreement, they would advise the consuls on their decisions. If one consul made a decision that the other consul did not approve of, he could say, veto, which is Latin for I forbid. Even though the consuls had the attributes of being very important and powerful, the two consuls had to work together to create a process of checks and balances, or a way to balance out each other's decisions. These ideas of the veto and checks and balances are two practices from ancient Rome that are part of the American government and other governments around the world today. That's pretty amazing that this, happened, this started over 1,500 years ago. So in image three box, you should have a picture to kind of summarize. Probably want to show several people for the Senate, right? Image four, as I read, I want you to write down key words that describe patricians. Say the word with me, patricians. So here you're writing down words to describe patricians as you listen. Not all citizens of Rome were treated equally. In fact, some people living in Rome were not citizens at all. People of Rome were divided into groups, each with different rights and privileges under the law. The smallest and most powerful group was called the patricians. Patricians were Rome's elite, a small group of wealthy, powerful people who owned large homes in the city, vineyards in the country, and villas on the coast. The patricians were citizens of Rome, meaning they had the right to vote and they had certain protections and privileges under the law. Because they were most, the most educated and privileged group, the patricians were also the ones most likely to become senators. So they got to make a lot of the laws in the Roman Republic. As you might guess, the people in this painting are wealthy Roman patricians. In contrast to the ancient Greek culture, Women in ancient Rome were considered citizens and wealthy women were part of the elite patrician group, although they could not vote or serve as a senator or consul. 
So hopefully you wrote down some words to describe patricians. Next, we're looking at image five. And I want you to write down words that describe plebeians. Say that with me, plebeians. Another group of Roman citizens were called plebeians. Plebeians were second class citizens, meaning that they did not have all the rights and privileges enjoyed by the patricians. However, the plebeians had one big advantage, numbers. Because the plebeians made up the largest portion of Roman citizenry, by far, the wealthy patricians learned that they needed to make sure the plebeians were happy, or at least happy enough that they wouldn't rise up and try to make take more power for themselves. Like patricians, plebeians were citizens, so they could vote. However, they were subject to a different set of laws than patricians. For instance, a patrician could freely insult and even attack a plebeian, but a plebe plebeian would be in big trouble if he did the same to a patrician. Plebeians could own property, but it was hard for them to gain enough land or money to become as rich or as powerful as the patricians. Plebeians came in all shapes and sizes, including fairly wealthy shopkeepers and traders, hardworking farmers and fishermen, and other poor and lowly workers. Farmers were important because plentiful crops were very necessary for the success of Rome's culture and civilization. That is one of the main reasons why Romans worshiped Saturn, the god of the harvest. So on your uh, paper, you should have some words written down to describe plebeians. For box six, you're finishing the sentence. One fact I learned is, so we're reading about the Romans at the marketplace. So you're just gonna write down one thing that you learn. When farmers are successful and have a great harvest, they have more food than they really need to just feed their family. This is called a surplus. Roman farmers with a surplus of food could share their bountiful supply or sell it to other people at the marketplace. Those people in turn didn't have to work as hard to feed themselves. Instead, they could turn their attention to other things like making pottery, blacksmithing, or weaving cloth. Some Romans worked on making elaborate sculptures and mosaics. When they had a surplus of harvested crops, ancient Romans also had a surplus of time to honor their gods, which they spent by building temples, going to festi festivals like Saturnalia, and participating in rituals. So write one thing that you learned in the box for image six. Turn to the back of 4.2. This is uh, image seven. Explain the Roman Forum. So listen carefully. And then as I'm reading, write down what you learn about the Roman Forum. Many Romans who didn't farm were traders and merchants. They would sell goods that came from ships all over the known world. Remember, Italy is a peninsula in the Mediterranean Sea. These goods would be sold in markets located in large, open gathering places called forums. In these forums, people could shop, listen to debates, and worship in temples. The biggest forum was in the heart of Rome and was therefore called the Roman Forum, or just the Forum. The Senate had an important building in the Forum where the senators and consuls met to debate and discuss issues. The Forum was a very important place in Roman society, serving as a gathering place of culture, economy, politics, religion, and much more. The ruins of the Forum today attract many tourists each year. So hopefully in box seven, you wrote down something about the Roman Forum and what it is. 
In box eight, it says describe enslaved Romans. So listen to find out what enslaved Romans were. Another group of people who lived in Rome were the slaves. Slaves were not considered citizens of Rome, so they could not vote. Slaves belonged to their owners, so they did not have the freedom to do as they pleased. Slaves could not choose where to live or work. They had no choice in what job they got to do, and they were not allowed to quit the jobs their owners gave them. Roman slaves did have some rights. For instance, Roman slaves were allowed to receive as much education as they needed to be better at whatever job they had. After some time, if slaves worked very hard for their owner, they could earn their freedom. Once slaves were given their freedom, their children were considered full Roman citizens. You may be wondering where these slaves came from. As Rome expanded into new territories, the Romans fought wars with the people already living in those areas. It was common for the people on the losing side of a war to become slaves for the winning side when the war was over. Slaves were considered the property of their owners. They had to obey their owners and do difficult work for no pay. They were also not allowed to insult or attack a Roman citizen or there would be consequences. Slaves were considered the most lowly people in Roman society at the other end of the spectrum from the elite class. So in box eight, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I don't think I was showing you the right picture there, was I? I think I missed a picture. Um, okay, so let's turn to page uh, number nine, image nine, what is the main idea of the read aloud? So as I read, um, I'm just gonna read this closing paragraph. I want you to think about what is the main idea of the entire read aloud? What did we learn about? Whether patrician, plebeian, or slave, man, woman, or child, all of the people of ancient Rome contributed in their own ways to the many components of this ancient civilization. So go ahead and write down for image nine, what is the main idea of the read aloud? And if you need to go back and listen to any parts, please do so. If not, you can go ahead and submit this on Schoology.